right, so when you plug in one for your tape in your table, you get x1. Oops, I always do that. X1 equals two thirds, 0.666, repeating. So when you plug in two thirds for the next spot in your table, you get 0 0.54861, and so on. That's what we found by hand. All right, let's do X3. So plug in. So it was 0.54. Let's do a couple more decimal places. Let's do one, 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 like that. So plug that in for the next spot. So I get 0 0.5323901, well, 2, 1, 6. All right, 1, 6. X4. Is it getting closer and closer to the same thing? 0 0.532088. Eight nine. Okay, so then plug that into the next one. See how it keeps going. That one looks good. That looks like four decimal places. So point five three two zero eight nine. So <coughs> x is approximately point five three two one four decimal places of accuracy. So that's it. Make sense how we do this? Yeah, it's not too hard. All right, so now it says number two, use Newton's method to approximate the cube root of seven. So hint, think about what equation you would get, or what equation you would have in order to solve this. So what equation gives you this as an answer? <laughs> you see, if you subtract your seven, take the cube root, that's giving you x equals the cube root of seven. So that means your f of x is equal to x cubed minus 7, and f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. So on my y1, I'm going to do x minus f of x divided by f prime of x. Okay, and then I'm going to get my approximations. Oops. So I'm starting with, where do you guys think, what do you think we should start with? So think about whole numbers that you would plug in for x. Can you show how you got like 3, 7, x? Yeah, I just work backwards. Like if you do x, like the cube root of x equals, or hang on, let me see. Cube root of 7 equals x. Cube both sides. Subtract the 7. So you get x cubed minus 7 equals 0. You can do it that way. I just did it in my head. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Okay. So think of whole numbers. Is one going to be close to zero when you plug it in? No. no. Two? Better. So you could even go, you could say, okay, it's somewhere between one and two. Two is too big, right? Um, one point five. So yeah, you could do like 1.5 if you want. Or you could just do two, it doesn't matter. Okay, so plug that in for your y1. So you're plugging in this right here for y1. Going to your table, we're using an initial guess of 1.5. When you do that, arrow over so you can see all of two or all of the y values, so it's 2.037037. Plug that in for the next one in your table. When I do that, I get x3 is equal to, sorry, that was x0, x1, x2. It doesn't really matter, but x2 is 1.920338. So plug that in for the next one. You guys getting this? Uh, 
It's not letting you do it. Yeah, it's table set. And then independent, make it so it's ask. That's a nine there. 1.912957. We got four decimal places. That's usually where they want you to stop, so that's good. Okay, so it makes sense. Do we have one more example? Two more? Yeah. Okay, so use Newton's method to approximate the zero of f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 1. Use the initial guesses x x sub 0 equals 1, x sub 0 equals 2. What did you conclude? So one of them is probably going to give you not a good answer. You're probably going to keep, keep doing approximations and you're not getting close. I'm guessing one of the other ones does work. So go ahead and do both. I'll let you guys try it on your own. So let's do the last one. So there's all my values for number 3. So both were bad guesses. So number four, it says find correct to five decimal places the root of the equation cosine of x equals x. Okay, so what is your f of x? Right, cosine x minus x, because we need it to be equal to zero, right? We're trying to find the zero of my function. Okay, so f of x is cosine of x minus x. So f prime of x is? <coughs> You got it. All right. So on your y1, you're going to plug in x minus f of x, so cosine of x minus x, divided by negative sine of x minus 1. Okay, anybody have a good initial guess? Are we just trying to find one zero? Trying to find one zero, what do you mean? The point of this is to find the zeros, right? Uh huh, to find the zero. Yeah, yeah. Like the zero. The cosine equation can't have lots of zeros. Uh, possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's cosine x minus x, so usually that means yeah, there's some kind of, like it's going up or down. It's negative x, so. So you guys found what cosine of x minus x looks like. I only see one zero, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. Where? Cosine of x minus x. Oh, just that. We just that. Okay, yeah, so if you cheat and look at cosine of x minus x, it looks like what I was just saying. It's, it's like that. So you're just finding one. Yeah, you're not trying to find the zeros of this. You're trying to find the zeros of this. Okay, so I'm guessing it's probably somewhere around, like, one. So, yeah, it's going to be small. Like, think of what cosine of one is. Cosine of 1 is 0, so then minus 1 would be negative 1. So that's kind of close. So let's try 1. So you get 0.75. Seven. All right. So then the next one. So point seven five zero three six three eight seven. Point seven three nine one one two eight nine. 
let's go to x2, x3, 0.739112889, so I get 0 0.739085. <coughs> Yeah, we're pretty close. Oh yeah, I guess that's 0 0.73901, but let's try one more just in case to make sure it doesn't go down a little bit more. So 0 0.739085. Yeah, so 0 0.7391 is what you want for four decimals. Oh, I wanted five decimals though. Oh well, we'll just do four. <laughs> but I did say five, didn't I? All right, so Newton's method makes sense. All right.